everybody. Welcome to day three of our Reimagine School Challenge. And so welcome, welcome. Um, my name's Tony. And I just, I guess I really thought about this. This is a great time of reflection for all of us. Um, whether you are a work in a school and you're an educator or you're not, it's a great way to really reflect on what's what you have been doing and when we have these pauses even though it's something that's negative we want to use it for a positive so here we are and we are thinking about how we can reimagine school and so every day we're looking at a different piece of that and so today we are on the I so we remember we started and I'm going to just check my notes here because we started on Monday, we talked about reimagining our relationships. Um, Tuesday, we talked about reimagining our environment. And today, we're going to talk about reimagining instruction. Now, this is the thing. There's a two twofold point to these little talks. And one of them is obviously to apply it to school. So whether you're a teacher, an administrator, uh, a superintendent, it doesn't matter um, your role in the school, but how can you reimagine these different facets of the school system, okay? And then we're also talking about how we then apply it to our life. So that's the cool part is that there are applications to the real, uh, your real life. And we've been, we've gone through a lot of things, right? Together, um, together in separate places, right? <laughs> social distancing. So, you know, it's a great time for us to go inward and think and reflect. So here we go. Reimagining instruction. You know what? I started off because at first I thought, well, perfect, you know, school instruction, obviously we got to reimagine it. But um, I went back to the word instruction because I think we need to start there, everybody. And I really never can say I've looked up the word, but this is interesting. These are the what I found uh, in the, in the online dictionary. Okay, number one, a direction or an order, an instruction. Number two, the second uh, definition, detailed information about how something should be done, operated, or assembled. Okay, and then three, teaching, comma education. All right, so when we talk about instruction. All right, we talk about we talk about teaching, right? We we're kind of referring as educators to teaching. It's the third definition on here. And I want to go back to the especially the first two because is this really what we want in our schools? One is a direction or an order. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um two, detailed information on how something should be done, operated or assembled. Wow. So how something should, that's telling someone how it should be done. Now that's great when you're operating a, like a, a vehicle or you're, you're using a specific kind of tool because you could get hurt if you're not going to work it right. But is that what we want for schools with kids to get them learning? I say no. Okay? I, I would say no. And it comes from the Latin root, structus. I don't know if I'm saying it right, which means built. Okay, so we need to go back there because these definitions of how something should be done really is not the goal of school. It was before, but now how do we reimagine instruction so that it's not the goal of school anymore? Please don't let it be that goal because kids have more information on their phones, in their pocket, than you could ever give them in notes. And teachers, you know, we are learning that. And I've had to change the way I teach over these 27 years. So in the beginning, that's what it was like. And, and that's what it was about. So when I look at the word built, the Latin root word structus means built. That's what we want. Let's get back to that root word. Built. We want kids to build their knowledge. We want them to build their insight. We want them to build their understanding of the world around them and build the framework for innovative ideas. That's what we want. Let's go back to that word 
um, where the root word from instruction is structus, which means built. So I challenge us to reimagine instruction. So instead of thinking about what, because I also think of this as in, you know, you're putting things in, you're instructing, you're putting things in the kids' minds. No, no, no. Okay, maybe back in the day, but not now. So I like to think of it as what we want to get out of kids. What do we want to get out of them? We want their creativity. We want them to show, showcase their skills. We want them to think of new ideas and be innovative. That's what we want. It's not about telling them how to do something. Because there's so many ways even to do math. Okay, So we need to kind of reduce that control of what we're doing. So it's not about that information that we give out as teachers. It's about how they use the information that's so widely available to them. Um, and so we really need to reimagine that. So if you're a teacher, if you're a district leader, if you're a principal, think about some of the systems you have in place in your classroom, in your school, in your district that, you know, that can be modified so that we pull the best out of kids, okay? Um, and the number one way, if you read a lot of the influential uh, authors out there about this, is to help kids ask the right questions. And we always talk, you know, teachers have to have the right questions. Yes, they do. But teachers have to also, and we all as educators in the school, which I consider everyone, we have to facilitate those questions. And not just create them for the kids, but have them ask, you know, we don't have to give them everything right away. We can give them a problem and they work it out. We can give them a scenario and they figure it out and you just ask what's going on. You ask why, why is this going on? And kids write more questions because a lot of times the questions they write are more important than the answers. And that's always hard for us to think about because we, we as teachers want to give them the answer. We want them to learn it. And here's the answer. I want to help you. But you know what? You're helping more when you're helping them ask questions. So you want, you know, think about how we're reimagining instruction right now during this time where we're not in the same location, where we have to learn virtually, where we have to still stay connected. A lot of the sites that we're sharing our experiences, virtual field trips. I found a virtual um, uh, amusement park ride site. Have the kids ask questions about that. Maybe think about what it's gonna be like before they watch it, after what they thought about it. You know, it's not about just watching it and getting the information, but it's about asking the right questions about it. Now that we watched that roller coaster, what can I do with that information? Making that information actionable. Um, okay, so how can we, so yes, if you're an educator, think about something that you can change. And you know, with these videos, just kind of pick one thing. I mean, this is, even if you just write down one thing, um, and I'm kind of keeping a little journal during this time, so I'll talk a little bit about journaling another day, but uh, right now, just think of one thing, one way you can facilitate that wonder and those questions. Maybe you just have something weird, like an object that's an artifact from history in your classroom and you don't say anything and then kids come in and it's like, oh, hmm. Just the other day, okay, we start our day with morning motivation. It's kind of like a morning meeting. And I had, I have a purple pumpkin that has prizes in it. Jerry Brooks uh, definitely gave me that idea. So, um, and I was just dancing with the pumpkin and the ki and I, ha I wanted to see how many kids would ask me, why are you holding that pumpkin? <laughs> because not normally do I dance with the purple pumpkin. It's not a normal thing. But I wanted to see if they would ask. And they, so they, a kid asked me, and then I said, I said, for curious kids like you. And I gave the kids, I don't know, a fruit snack or something. I want kids to get the benefit out of asking questions. They don't always have to know the answer, but they have to know the right question to ask. 
So reward those questions and not always reward the answers because I think we just do get stuck in that. That's the old way of doing it. Reimagine, reward the question. Hey, you asked that? You know what? We're going to find out together and I know that you can find out. So how do we apply this to our life? Well, think about how you learn new things, okay? Um, besides YouTube, because that's what I do. <laughs> no, but there's a lot of things going on that we, that we can use. And especially now, like there are some sites. I just found this cool site. Um, and and it, it has all of these um, courses you could take from Ivy League, League colleges for free. So um, check it out. I, what I'll do is I'll share them. They're on, I shared them on the MVLA page. So if you don't uh, know my school's website, it's uh, for Facebook, it's Messiah Valley Leadership Academy. So you can go there. There's a lot of those virtual sites. I know some people are asking. So Melissa, you can check it out there. And I will also try to share them to my page, but I did share a lot there on the school page, Messiah Valley Leadership Academy. So are you asking the right questions of yourself and how you can learn? So Tony Robbins has a great quote and I just thought of it um, as I was thinking about and reflecting on really instruction. And this is what he says. He says, the quality of your life is a direct reflection of the quality of the questions you're asking yourself. And that comes from Awaken the Giant Within. If you haven't read that book, please get it, uh, check it out. Um, the quality of your life is a direct reflection of the quality of the questions you're asking yourself. So it's, he doesn't say it's the quality of the answers that you have because it's not about that. It's about asking the right questions and reflecting. So he talks about these three, and this is again, Tony Robbins. He asked three questions every day of himself. What is something I can do for someone else today? What's something I can do to add value to the world today? And what's something I can offer to other people? It helps you gain a new perspective on things, especially with what we're going through now, everybody. What we're going through now is difficult. We're going to get through it. Are we asking the right questions? I think we are. I think we are. We need to continue to question. Because a lot of times when, you, when you're young, you know, we see three-year-olds, four-year-olds, they're asking questions, two-year-olds. They're like, what's that? What's that? What's that? They ask questions all the time. But as you get older, it's almost like we've developed a culture where if you ask a question, you seem like you're dumb or something. And we don't want that. We want our kids to grow up asking questions. Let's go back to our original word, instruction. We want to reimagine instruction. Go to the root word. It's not about directing people. It's not about telling kids how they, something needs to go and be done and operated or assembled. Those days are long gone. How do we make instruction back to that root word, the Latin root of being built? How do we help our students and ourselves build knowledge, build skills, build an innovative way of thinking about the world and build solutions. Because that's what we need right now, right? All right. So reimagine instruction. We can all do it, but start small. Think of one thing you can do in your classroom, in your school, and then something you can do for yourself as how you think about how you learn and what you can, the questions you're asking yourself. That's what I think about when we're reimagining instruction. How do we get kids to be great question askers? And then they'll figure out and create those answers. Have a great day. Stay healthy. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching.